Hi everyone, Akiba here. You may be wondering why I did a pre-recorded video, whereas I could just as easily talk about this in real time during office hours. There are two reasons. One, we've gotten some requests to see demonstrations of the wild logger in action. Since I've messed up more than my fair share of live demos, I decided to pre-record it so I won't panic if I do something wrong. Two, it's so much easier to give material this way because I can just read what I'm supposed to say. I love that. Anywho, Jacinta already went through what to look forward to in Module 2, which is going to lead us into Module 3. Module 3 is where the meat of the data logger application will be implemented. We're going to go through it slowly and test piece by piece each of the main functional blocks in the data logger. We'll be using a command line that will actually be running on the Arduino microcontroller on the wild logger board. So first thing to do is to plug in the batteries and the USB and just get things set up. And next we open up the serial monitor in the Arduino IDE. Don't worry if you don't know what that is. Um, we're going to go through that in module 2. Here you can see the command line. The first thing we'll be doing in module 3 is to install the library for it and then learn how to implement our own commands. Next I'm reading the temperature and humidity from the sensor. The units for the temperature are in degrees Celsius and the units for the humidity are in percent relative humidity. We'll also be learning how to install the library for this and implementing the read temperature and read humidity commands. This is the current battery voltage. It's an important piece of information that we can use to track our battery performance over time as we log our data. We'll be learning how to use the analog to digital converter on the Arduino and then implement the calculations to convert that to our actual battery voltage. Here I'm setting the date, the time, and then reading back the time, date, and date time. We'll also be installing the library for the real-time clock and learning how to implement this for both our data timestamp and as an alarm clock to wake the device up and take measurements. And finally, I'm listing the files in the directory on our micro SD card, writing a new data point to the file, and then reading back the complete log file. The file format is CSV, or comma separated values, and I'm including the date, the time, the temperature, humidity, and the battery voltage. If we track this over time, then we'll be able to see how quickly our battery depletes, as well as how the temperature and humidity fluctuate over time. We'll be installing the SD card library and file system and learn how to implement the commands we need to create new files as well as write, read, and append to files. That'll take us through Module 3. Module 4 is where the fun begins. We'll be learning slightly more advanced topics like how interrupts work and how we'll be using them as a strategy to save power and increase battery life. And then we'll be doing what we call top-level integration, which means we'll be tying all the pieces up into a functional application. At this point, you should have a working data logger, but not an optimal one, and we'll discuss that more in Module 5.